the next person I'm uh, really happy to be uh, introducing to you all uh, is Mina Banisid, a customer service assistant at Sainsbury's and Pride in North Cumbria project worker. Uh, Mina is a resident uh, within Cumbria and sees Carlisle as their hometown within the UK. Mina is a diversity and inclusion champion at Sainsbury's uh, and is also a, a co-chair of Carlisle City of Sanctuary. Uh, always interested and passionate about equality in all areas. Uh, race equality became more important when moving to the UK due to the different experiences there that Mina encountered in comparison to a uh, home country. Um, here to explain more uh, is Mina. Thank you, Lee. And hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Mina. I'm from Iran and uh, I moved to the UK two and a half years ago. It is my pleasure, first I want to mention this, that it is my pleasure that be a presenter here and thank you for inviting me to be a presenter. So I want to just tell you about my uh, journey uh, come from Iran to here and what happened to me and what I'm doing. So uh, I want to give you a vision about how it feels being a woman in Iran. So as a woman in Iran, there is a there is a never ending battle with yourself, with your family, with the society and with the government law. Uh, you always belong to somebody else. Uh, it could be your uh, first is your dad. After you get married is your husband, your brother, your cousins and it's just men of your family. So you never have that uh, freedom to be you or do whatever you think is your rights as a human, not just as a woman. Uh, I have a lovely family and my family are uh, so open minded. My parents are so open minded compared to their generation. Uh, and Growing up, I always been told that men and women are equal and uh, there is no difference between them. But when I get to my puberty age and in my teenage years, what I faced was completely different from what I promoted. Uh, I could see many, many differences between me and my younger brothers uh, as a girl, as a female and I wouldn't be able to do some of the things that my younger brother uh, able to do. So I thought, uh, oh, it's not fair and it doesn't seem right what is happening to me because what I have been promoted is completely different. Why there should be these inequality here? And it doesn't mean that my parents didn't love me or whatever. Uh, of course, they loved me and they wanted to protect me, but uh, it wasn't right for me. So I always had uh, many problems uh, as a woman uh, back to Iran, uh, as many sisters of mine back to my country. So. Uh, two and a half years ago, I moved here, but moving to the UK wasn't an easy decision for me uh, to make. It took me almost two years to finally overcome, almost overcome, to my fears and insecurity and move here. Uh, I thought by myself that, okay, I go there and if uh, I couldn't do it, I would back to my country. But you never know what life planning for you. Since uh, the day that I uh, I've got here, many things happened to me. Many things has been changed. Uh, I would be able to finally, finally um, find out about my sexual identity, uh, met my girlfriend, and just coming out of my shells and of the closet, and it completely changed my life. I can say it forever. Uh, but many other changes happened to my life uh, and I am getting to know myself more and more. And even it's better to say that uh, the process of getting to mo know myself uh, got faster. So I, what I feel right now and 
at this moment is like I am taking back all of the power every day, the power that has been taken off from me by the law, by the uh, culture, by the society, and uh, just I feel more powerful now. And uh, I've done many things for the first time uh, here that they are forbidden back in my country. Um, for example, I went to a gym that men can be there too, and uh, or being with a swim costume at the beach and uh, going for uh, even playing pool. <laughs> so it is completely for, forbidden for women uh, back in my country. These things are completely, completely out of my comfort zone, and I'm challenging myself every day by doing uh, these things. Uh, and uh, Cumbria is a very beautiful place. It was uh, something that I haven't planned to come to Cumbria, come to Carlisle, but uh, it happened. And I really love uh, the area. I really love the country. And I I met lots of amazing people here. Uh, and they've been a big help for me. Uh, but I can't say that uh, that everything was was just uh, beautiful uh, when I came here or even now. I faced many, many things uh, that they've been like a barrier for me. And one of the most, um, the biggest barriers was my, I think, lack of uh, vocabularies in English when I first moved here but I needed to do everything by myself and help myself so I needed to learn more and more English uh, so now after two and a half years I'm really proud of myself that I can speak English that much that people can understand me but this uh, lack of uh, knowledge of the vocabularies uh, till now sometimes just uh, it's a big barrier or uh, for me or at least I think it is because I uh, I just uh, I am a little bit nervous so I lose my vocabularies yeah it's a big barrier for me still till this day because I think if I I was more fluent in English. I could get more opportunities here, uh, which I lost them because of that. Uh, this is the the way of thinking of mine, and I'm not sure that if it's true or not. Uh, so the barriers that I faced uh, along my journey. Uh, it just mm, had some consequences for me, uh, like I questioning my own values and abilities uh, and uh, feeling sometimes feeling isolated and uh, low self-esteem even till this day. Another thing that I want to talk about is about uh, uh, the experiences that I've been having based on my racial differences. Uh, which they were completely different from what I experienced uh, back in my country. So when I was, uh, we have different ethnicities that they live in my country, uh, and like other countries, some of the people in my country, uh, they could be racist towards those people, those different ethnicities. Uh, I never faced uh, with that uh, discriminations because of my ethnicity, because I am part Arab. I never had that experiences, but I, I've, I, I've seen many of these discriminations against my cousins and against uh, other people in my country. But I never ever faced uh, these discriminations because of my ethnicity. 
But when I came here, I could, I faced some of these discriminations and it was so difficult for me. And uh, it just made me question that, oh, am I doing something wrong? Why I am here? Why, why I am doing this? Why people can't accept me for who I am? Uh, I, 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 I've been already discrimination because of being woman at my country. And I thought, OK, I moved somewhere else and I would be free. I am free as a woman, but I am part of LGBT community. I am uh, from different race and I am part of minority. So it just sometimes feels uh, so difficult and I am more conscious about uh, my ethnicity and my race here uh, and it's a I think it's a big problem for me uh, I feel sometimes so everything that happened to me in my in my first assumption is okay if this person has this uh, behavior towards me it must be because I am not from here and it can make some barriers between me and other um, people from here. So I try to talk more and more about myself, about my journey and about uh, my country and try to know more and more about uh, these countries, um, uh, British uh, culture, uh, and uh, mm, everything about the British people that I can make communication with them and I can make uh, more friendly communication with people. Uh, to be honest, many good people are around me and I've been so privileged to have them in my life. But uh, recently I had the bad very bad experiences that why I am talking like that, that uh, this is the reason that why I am talking like that today. So another thing that I am really, really passionate about to, to do based on my lived experience and what I've been through and what I uh, learned is uh, to help other people that they had the similar experiences uh, as me. Uh, to give them, uh, to educate them and uh, empower them to be able to know, to know themselves and uh, what they want to be. Mostly, uh, my focus is mostly on women and on LGBT community, refugee LGBT community, because these two uh, groups are so vulnerable and they really, really need uh, to know and help themselves more and more uh, so this is it I think I was really really fast <laughs> um, can, I, can I just pick up on that Mina um, if you don't mind about you you're talking about um, wanting to educate women and empower women because I know we've been in conversation recently with yourself and Sam from Pride in North Cumbria um, and also Adrienne from Carlisle One World Centre about developing some work for women um, across the county. And, and I think that it's really important to just raise that the reason that that project came about was because of you and because of your experiences and you are turning your experiences, your difficult experiences into something positive. Um, and that and this it really illustrates some of the things that I was trying to say as well that you know we projects come from sometimes a, a one person and one person's experience and that person's experience reflects lots of other people's experiences. 
and you're able to help those people and then we we're looking at how how we do that you know do we go in a classroom and start telling people uh, giving them an, a lesson an education I, you know i don't think that would work so we talk about trying to come up with more creative and innovative ways to do things and to get women talking um, and that's that's what we're exploring at the moment and we think we think we might have some fun <coughs> for it um, yeah so um, I just really wanted to to point that out because this this is really important to to the work that Multicultural Cumbria do um, it, you know because we've been told in the past that um, it, it's not we've got to look at the masses rather than individuals but actually a lot of the time it comes from individuals and that and these things come from little conversations and I've, I've got to say I can't I can't not say that I am just so so proud of you and seeing how you've developed over the two and a half years because I I, I met you when you very first came and you could barely speak a word of English and you know we, we've got to know each other and and it's incredible and you really are incredible and and again it's just how we um, nurture and develop people like you who are so intelligent so passionate um, and just need that opportunity to be in an environment where you can really blossom yeah. and to be a community champion to be able to really inspire others because until we have more people putting their head above the parapet and and putting themselves out there to connect with other people things won't change yeah. so for us uh, it is so important that we support individuals. I was told at one point, well, good luck to you if um, you want to work with individuals because it's very time consuming and uh, it's not really that rewarding. And that shocked me because it was from a person that worked in uh, their job was in this field. But it was much easier to work with organisations rather than individuals. And to us, it was like, I'm an individual, Tina's an individual, you're an individual. But actually, when we come together, when we have that opportunity to work together, then we become something bigger. So for us, every single person makes a difference. And whether that's um, uh, engaging and trying to make your passion and your dreams come alive it is about having those opportunities and organizing events and organizing fun social activities as well if we've got that many different heritages here can you imagine if we just pulled 70 different heritages together and what we could do and that is our aim that's something we can do and that makes Cumbria a better place to live and work and we have got so many gems like you and slowly but surely we are um, trying to do the best that we can to bring you together and and I think what the thing is it's so difficult for anyone to actually speak in public yeah. it takes a lot of courage um, and for one, even me having done this for so long, you always come out of doing a talk and think, should have said that, I didn't say that, mm -hmm. I would have said that. Do you know that doesn't matter? Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you're doing it and you're making that difference. So that's why at Race to Be, we always really enjoy having people from within the communities and highlight them because this isn't about us. I've had my um, time in the limelight, so I don't mind stepping back. <laughs> and we need new faces. We need new vitality. And every single person does make a difference. So thank you 
for uh, coming on and everybody she will be on board in news tonight uh, with an interview with, as well so if you want to catch that at six o'clock please do thank you. thank you from both of you it's like every individual and uh, is precious and we can learn from that for me telling a stories is the most important thing uh, for example before i come here i was following many uh, women that they came uh, here by themselves from my country to see what they've been through, how they work out the, uh, their way and uh, how they become what they are right now. And it really, really helped me to overcome to many of my fears and my insecurities. Uh, so because of that, I think what we need to really, really focus on, in my point of view, is just listen to people uh, and their stories and open, uh, be open uh, to conversations, making conversations, uh, not just uh, refugees conversations or other culture conversations. This conversation should be between all of us together to know each other more and just uh, we can answer many questions and some of those fears that come from uh, lack of knowledge and you know to be educated uh, it go away and we can have a better community and work together and people like me can feel more belonging to the, the city to the country because at the end of the day I am living here I am working here uh, and I am member of this city and member of this community at the moment and what I want and I see color as, a, as my hometown right now so whatever I want for this city and for this county is just good things I want to everybody be happy and everybody try to know each other and just uh, make a better life for all of us it is the most important thing so this is my passion that one day I can see these conversations happening between all the people without fear, without insulting each other and just have a better city and community. I, I know that it needs uh, work, but uh, I think one day we will get there. Yeah. We will definitely and I think um, some of the things you were talking about as well about growing up and um, we were having a conversation uh, yesterday about different cultural differences um, and uh, I can relate to you about being brought up being told you're equal and then you get to 15, 16 and then things start changing actually it's not um, but I can remember my brother turning seven and him getting a bike and I was like well I wanted to ride a bike as well I wanted a bike but it just wasn't the way because in society in our culture more emphasis was paid to the boys rather than the girls and um, I wasn't a good I can't ride a bike properly anyway, but that wasn't the point. <laughs> it was you the point. Given the chance. I wasn't given the chance because I didn't get a bike. And as you grow older, like you did, your experiences as well, um, <clears throat> you start realizing the differences and start questioning it. And sometimes, for me anyway, there were no answers. And I was just told, well, that's just the way it is. Or, Islam was used as a way of saying, well, it says in Islam you can't do this. Until I actually found out, actually, there's a lot more we are allowed. So in your experiences while you were in Iran, how did how did those differences appear? It is, it is the same, actually. For example, because I, uh, Iran is an Islamic country, and whatever we are banned uh, and forbidden to do is based on the uh, Islamic rules that government uh, promoting to us but some of these are just mixed mixture between the religion and the culture and the law and uh, at the end 
you don't know that where should you go. For example, uh, like you riding a bike, it was illegal for women. My brother had the bike. I never had a bike, but I always stole his bike. <laughs> and, <laughs> As we do. <laughs> learn how to ride a bike and when I grew up he had another bike a very good bike but I couldn't have a bike so I was begging them could you please come with me outside at 12 uh, o'clock uh, 12 a.m at night mm -hmm. actually just ride this bike for five minutes when nobody is outside in the in the street so, and when I came here, I think it was just like a few months ago that I told Sarah that, could you please come with me to go and just borrow a, borrow a bicycle that I can just ride it. And <clears throat> it was just such a good feeling that I am able to do that. Uh, and nobody look at me that because I am a woman and I am riding a bike and there is there's freedom for me. Yeah. Yeah, or just like driving a car. It's not illegal for women, but what men treated you as a woman, uh, as a driver, as a woman driver, is completely different from what they uh, they treat men. So even from that, I had uh, I asked my dad, could you please give me, give me your car that I drive? I passed my driving uh, test for the first time, and I was the first person in my family after my dad that I got my driving license, and I was a good driver. But I never get uh, get that chance to drive as much as my brother get that that chance. He had car crashes. He didn't have his driving license, but he allowed to ha to drive that car. But I never got a chance, uh, just a few times. So when you think that, okay, wait a minute, why? It shouldn't be like that. No. So, but I think, that's, I think that's what makes us stronger. Yeah. Um, and I was quite stubborn. And it was like, well, I want to know the reason why I can't. Um, but for me, it was much later after I'd had my children as well that I had the courage, I suppose, and the strength to say, well, this is not acceptable. And sometimes your own communities turn away from you because they feel that you're too challenging and that our place was um, not to talk too much and be a bit more obedient. So, um and I think that's fear, that's fear. So this is about us empowering ourselves and our children as well. And equality comes within, uh, again, within that partnership of having relationships and your family and discussing things that sometimes they don't want to discuss. And until it's talked about, I don't think some families will change. Um, but... But there's so many areas that need to be discussed because the impression of Islam is very different to reality. And it's not, to be honest, if we back to uh, some of the moments, it's, it's not because of the Islamic rules or it's not because of religion, it's what is in the society that is right for women or not. For example, I remember when I got my second piercing, uh, I was just 30 years old. Five years ago, and when I came home, my mom said, "Do you know who, do you, which women do that?" I said, "Mom, do that and say this to me." So for me, getting piercing now or getting tattoo is take back the ownership of my body, and it's the way that I can present myself and say that, "Okay, I'm independent. I, the only person that can." tell me what can I do and what I can't do is just myself mm -hmm. and values so nobody can tell me what can I do and what I can't do and I want these for all of the women that they have these uh, things uh, in their mind and in their 
communities and their culture to be able to see that they have the power. Nobody else has this power and it's their own uh, decision and their power to do whatever they want to do and decide. And this is their decision to re that should make what they want to do. Exactly. And I think um, there's power in numbers and the more we can engage and empower, um, the more I think richer uh, our communities are yeah. as well. And it gives the opportunities to talk because we do waste some time. We start talking about one little conversation and we're there for about 20 minutes about cultural differences. But it's not a waste of time it's though. That, that's the thing because it's really, it's, a, it's about developing that insight and, and what I was saying earlier about developing us as individuals as well as professionals. So yeah, we're working together, but we're learning much more than about the job. You know, yeah. I take it home. I, I talk to my daughter about the conversations that we have here. Um, and it's and it's fascinating to hear her perspective on that as well. You know, I told her yesterday what we were talking about. Mm -hmm. And Sonia, um, our administrator, was saying a lot of the same things. Um, because she's from India and has had a lot of the same experiences mm -hmm. and it, it's you know I know some of it but yeah it's still new and the the, the topic oh can't hear you that this is uh, what making conversation is about this is it and I think I just have two minutes left I want to see if anybody has any questions for me it was really, really lovely talking to you. I, I <laughs> conversation. Hope we can continue that in another day. Yeah, definitely. Lovely. Thank you so much. Over to you, Lee. Yeah, I was just giving people a couple of minutes in case I want to post anything in the chat or raise the hands. Uh, don't think there is, which is not a problem. Um, no, thank thank you so much, Mina, and thank you, uh, Sarge and Tina, for exploring that conversation a bit further as well. I think, like I say, to have those own personal experiences that you've accounted for us and to to use that to to empower and support others is something that shouldn't be uh, undervalued, underappreciated. It's a fantastic cause. So thank you so much for sharing those personal experiences, Mina. Uh, 